Mike is one of the, well, he'll tell you about who he is and what he does. He's, he's somebody that has inspired really so much courage for people who are being scapegoated and stopped on and criminalized for being poor and being thrown out of this slave system that we're all trying to change. And so this is, this is uh, the bottom line, what happens to people on the streets and how they're being made into criminals. Um, Mike is one of the people that has organized the Occupy the Sidewalks movement, which is to stand up to the sit line, to the criminal sit line law. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna gas on and on. I, I just like to present Mike Zinn and then we're gonna hear from Paul Bowden and we will say a few um, matters. Not very useful things when, when he's ready to speak, so. Mike. Thank you, sir. Tell me. Yeah, my name is Mike Zinn. Um, I came to San Francisco about three years ago, and uh, even though I have no criminal history, no drug habit, and I don't drink, I was made a criminal immediately by the city for just being poor. Um, the Occupy movement started up a couple of months after I got to town, and I was actually sent to the movement because they profiled me as a drug user uh, to mess up the movement. The police actually sent me to the movement. Um, during the raid at JHP, the police destroyed everything that I owned. Uh, which all these, these things combined kind of irritated me a little bit, to say the least. Uh, on February 28th last year, we took back 101, six people. Uh, I came in a few days after the original take back, and uh, we stood up to everything. We took the stealing of our blankets, we took the stealing of our tents, we took the stealing of everything, and we stayed. We suffered through 40 degree temperatures. We had no blankets. We were soaked for weeks at a time, but we refused to budge. When the police were coming at us last year, they were using sit lie, they were using 647E, old laws which were not being applied legally. We found this out with Bell Bellstar, our legal assistant who was on the ground with us, and the occupiers all coming together uh, came up with a, a, a loophole in the law, which is exception number four. And exception number four says participating in attending or attending a parade, festival, performance, rally, demonstrating, meeting, or similar event conducted on a public sidewalk pursuant to and in compliance with a street use or other applicable permit. Now you have to understand the Constitution is a permit on this, so you can go without going and paying three or five hundred dollars for these permits that we're trying to get you to, to file for. Um, when we presented this to the police, we were immediately cited. The, the law was ignored. Uh, we started recording them and the cameras were used to back them off and it did work. Uh, for months at a time there, they would uh, stop using the sit lot on us. Instead, they would come at us then with 647E, which is the illegal lodging law. Now, here is the actual law, and this has been used, uh, Sarah, I believe since it was 1880s. The, on, on the lodging the, 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 is yeah, actually from the 1880s. Yeah. They, they dusted it off. It's an anti-vagrancy law. It, this Isn't is the this law. California yeah, state law? Yeah, this is law. a California state Actually. law. This is the law. It says, who lodges in any building, structure, vehicle, or place, whether public or private, without the permission of the owner. This is what they used to take down the JHP. They took the encampment down using 647E. Now, that is a public park. We were the owners. We had permission. They still did. They cited us and stole our equipment year-long at the 101 using this law. Uh, they were using the, uh, the, the sleeping bags and blankets, stuff, evidence of lodging, even though these were illegally issued citations. They kept our equipment and they kept our blankets, and we still have not gotten it back. Uh, they said that DPW lost it, but uh, that's not the case. The, uh, the police department of San Francisco has a policy of uh, creaming the homeless, crushing the homeless. It is being uh, used uh, citywide. These water tankers, these cannons, are now back in use against us after our ASAC campaign. Okay, the ASAC, for those of you who don't know, uh, Occupy went to the mayor's uh, uh, office and uh, called him a lot of names. Uh, we also uh, were lucky enough to call the Skull and Bone Society a lot of names. Uh, we got Nancy Pelosi, uh, we got a few other people, we got the Chief Sir, uh, and we got illegally arrested and cited many, many times over the 10 days that we were there. The, um, the mayor and the police chief are going to totally disregard the law on anything that we do. Uh, we need help on the sit lie campaign. 
uh, first off, because this can be done, this can be done quickly. We can get a, a, a situation set up at Fifth and Powell, we can get a situation set up at, uh, at the, the mayor's office. Uh, the upcoming Wiener Roast is an opportunity where we can really get the media involved and draw attention to the fact that there is a loophole that the homeless are going to be using. When the city comes and crushes the homeless who have stood up, uh, which they've been doing for the last uh, month or so since the ASAC campaign ended, um, we need houses. Not, not to insult you guys, but people who live inside houses, uh, the homeless call houses. Um, we need housing support to fight this law. And we can, we can take this law down. We helped with the Berkeley law. Our information went to Berkeley. They had the same loophole. They pulled the law back because they could not stop this loophole from being used. Uh, and if we beat this, then we can go and take the momentum and, and move it to a state level. And once we draw attention to the 647E, then the real goal of our small occupied group is to take back a piece of property called the retreat. That's what we call it. There is an abandoned city street that is about four blocks. It's approximately five acres. It's been abandoned for over 20 years. It's in Bayview. It is ground zero for the gentrification that's going on right now. If we set up a homeless community responsibly run, drug-free, alcohol-free, and it can be done, okay, we have to understand first off in, in doing anything for the homeless, you are going to attract thieves, violence, drugs, and alcohol. You have to face that right off. That does not stop the need for something like this to happen. These people are going to be exposed to uh, rainfall this year that has radiation that is so hot. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time in San Francisco, but we have to monitor it with a Geiger counter. It, it gets so high that it is dangerous. The homeless are going to be exposed to that. You all are going to be exposed to that also. The information is available online if you Google radiation or radioactive rain. Um, this, this type of thing is, is just, it's so callous that the city won't allow people to have a simple tent. That tent represents so much more than just shelter from the elements. It gives you your privacy. It gives you the ability to change your clothes for storage. You can lock your tent. We can have it monitored. If we can come together as a community, as, as Occupy, we can actually set up the sustainable tent city that the homeless deserve. We can take a load off of the city. The city is not capable of dealing with the problem. 